Hey, I'm Chase Rackley, and Chris Collins had requested that I connect with y'all and answer some of these questions that you've sent in. They're awesome questions, and I'm really excited to get to dive through them with y'all. So I'm gonna read each question and answer them as I go. And the first question is, could you tell us about your digital marketing agency that you first started? Yes, so when I was in college at Washita Baptist University, it all started when a friend of mine needed to start a website for his restaurant that he was building. And I had a friend on campus that was kind of super nerd, um, kind of one of those guys that you worried about does he have friends? Is he gonna murder everyone at the campus? Well, super cool guy. I loved him and I asked him, I was like, man, do you know how to build websites? He said, yeah. I said, will you show me? And he said, let's do the deal. So we connected over such a fun thing, building websites. And he showed me it is so not that hard. And a lot of businesses are way overpaying for building a website to be done in the right way. So I kind of started thinking, what if I helped other businesses? I, I had a few friends that had other businesses and I wondered, what if I showed them what we could do like we did for this restaurant and see if we could make something happen for them that would be a great, a better fit so they could have the online presence that they deserve. So uh, it, it kind of grew. And I, on my commute from Washita to Little Rock, whenever I would go home, I would call every business I'd see on the way home. I just would, I'd call them up and say, hey, tell me about your, your website. Are you, you know, who do you have managing that right now? And they'd, you know, they'd say, oh, I don't, you know, somebody, usually it was like, oh, my nephew did that or some company, whatever. And then we'd often say like, okay, well, you know, are you satisfied with what it's bringing you or is it bringing you business? Uh, is there anything it does do that you want it, that it or doesn't do that you'd like for it to do? Is there anything that I can make it do that would make you happy? And a lot of times we'd get people who are like, yeah, we'd love to see what you could do. One of my first cold call client successes that I had was a, a, a recording studio. And y'all are going to love this. I called him, said, hey, man, I'm wondering if I could build your website. Uh, I think I quoted him like 900 bucks. And I said, if, if, if I can do it for 900, will you do me a free uh, recording session? I'll record a few songs. I didn't even, I'd never recorded before, but I thought it'd be a fun way to, to do that with him. So uh, he agreed, but he said, I can only pay you in installments of 300. I said, okay, good deal. Well, we built him the website for $300. He paid $300 a month and loved it so much that he paid $300 a month for three years. So it was an incredible relationship that we built because we were able to take that website, show them how we could leverage the site and continue to grow on it and, and continue to develop it in a way that was profitable for him. So yes, uh, starting that digital marketing agency was a blast and it was really fun. And uh, you know, we've built over a hundred websites um, and it's just been a lot of fun to serve small businesses, helping them explode their online presence into the, the digital marketing efforts that they deserve. So that's how we started our digital marketing agency, Rackley Creative, which now we leverage for our real estate clients to promote our listings for Rackley Realty, which is really Rackley team under iRealty Arkansas. So the next question, did you learn your digital marketing skills during college or on your own? Uh, to answer your question, college taught me nothing on digital marketing. Everything I learned for digital marketing uh, was just going for it and studying uh, outside of the classroom. However, the fundamental skills for success and understanding business, which leverages me to be able to provide a better service, understanding the business that I'm serving that in that college environment, when you partner those together is when you can really become a powerhouse source because I was able to understand kind of the back end, the, the what is what is our end goal for return on investment here, and how can we? Who the biggest question I learned how to to ask was who is our ideal client, and what what is the reason we're giving them to buy today, to call today, to sign up today? So when I could understand the fundamentals of business, I was able to then apply the the out of the box marketing I learned to be more effective for these small businesses. Next question. What would you suggest a high school student 
to do if they have an interest in digital marketing? Well, a number of things. Um, one, just about anybody I know would die to have an intern to basically run their social media marketing. And if, I mean, honestly, if you're wanting to do get some experience, even just for resume or just to learn, call me because I have plenty of people who need some marketing work done. And if you could do it for free, simply for the opportunity for to learn how to do it or to get the uh, the resume builder, heck yeah, let's do the deal. And it, otherwise, I would say call on those other businesses and say, hey, where could you use someone like me who loves to to do social media marketing? And then I can promise you they're going to say, yeah, we'll, we'd love to let you come and for an hour a week, just come over here and take some photos of what's going on and see if you can post them throughout the month. And it's going to be a great thing for both of you. And then eventually you get to the clientele and a reputation that you can start charging for that, just like I did. Okay, next question. Uh, why did you decide to switch from digital marketing to real estate? Great question. I didn't. So uh, real estate, when done at its ultimate potential, simply is digital marketing with a real estate license. The reason we've been successful to within my you know, first three years of selling houses be top 10 in Little Rock is simply because of digital marketing and, and being able to prioritize uh, you know, people over processes and prize integrity over profitability. Those are, you know, relationships are the most important thing in the world. And when you can keep that as the focus and then implement these strategies of digital marketing behind it, it's, it's gorgeous. So we didn't switch. We continue to use our digital marketing efforts, but I am my favorite client. I use the things that I try to sell to other people, but I buy it as, as my own business. In fact, Rackley Realty S Corp pays Rackley Creative LLC for digital marketing work. So all of our listings on our, on our real estate, you know, we're paying this marketing company to do all the, the marketing work. So we didn't switch, and I think that's part of why we've had such a, a great edge over the competition. Okay, why or has your digital marketing background benefited you as a realer, realtor? Yes, just as I was explaining, that has been a huge uh, leverage uh, over the competition. What is the most difficult part about the first year as a realtor? Um, I was talking to somebody about this today. It is hard to prioritize the person over the profitability, uh, meaning it's more important to build long-term clients, and, but, but in the real estate world, you don't make a lot of money on your first year unless um, it's, easy, it's easy to get distracted with trying to make money. It, making the money should never be the goal of real estate. I think if that's what drives you 100%, I'm concerned about you being a realtor because Really to, really, to be a realtor is to be a servant leader. You're guiding someone in one of the most important decisions of their life, and there's a lot of, uh, in my opinion, humility that should come with that. And, and you need to be able to say, I want to advise them to do what's in their best interest, not just what's going to get me a dollar today. Meaning, you should be able to tell someone, I don't think you should buy this house. More often than, oh yeah, yeah, do the deal today so I can get a commission in 30 to 45 days. So don't let be dollars what drives you. Dollars should not drive you. The opportunity to create an excellent service and be a great resource to your friends and family and to, to con continue to build uh, a reputation of integrity and great work, that can be what drives you. But I don't think it should be dollars. But to answer the question, that's the hard part is that it's easy to get distracted by dollars in your first year. So don't be distracted by that. Be focused on creating systems that work, uh, things that match your personality and match your creativity level and do it consistently. Um, what could I do while in high school that would benefit me as a real estate agent? Uh, I would say make friendships that will last. Be, be who you are. I mean, prize, 
prize those relationships that you have and you know you don't want to sell out on anything be be a true friend as best you can to as many people as you can who had the biggest uh, impact on your journey in real estate Roddy McCaskill Roddy McCaskill Jr. Uh, or senior I'm sorry he uh, he was absolutely incredible he and I met uh, at the dealership uh, Crane Ford Colonel Glenn uh, I, there's a part of my story where for a year out of college I worked as a marketing guy for a dealership a, a Ford store and he came in to buy a car and I was over the internet sales department and so I had the opportunity to go meet him and I was super impressed with him and from that day on uh, he's actually who invited me to sell with him and help him market his listings and, and promote his business and through that relationship he honestly he taught me everything I know and so I would say, if you're going to get into real estate, it's definitely worth taking a year to say, I'm only going to work on buyers for a, a mega agent. You need to find the top producer in your area. He was top five for 40 years in a row in central Arkansas. And thankfully, he blessed me for, I did not deserve for his mentorship. But I got it, and it was an incredible life change. And I'm eternally thankful for, for Roddy. Roddy McCaskill is definitely my biggest uh, hero in my real estate journey. What is your favorite party part? I'm sure that's supposed to say about being a realtor. Uh, the friendships, you know, getting to create, uh, you know, friendships of just all over the spectrum of, of demographics. I mean, uh, you know, I've gotten to go to, to fun, fancy events with some clients. Uh, I just met with a client that, Later tonight, we're going to meet up online and game. Like, who, what in the world? You know, but whatever it takes to connect with a client, I'm excited about it. So the relationships, the connections with all types of people, that's probably my favorite part. Um, and then second to that, if not matched with it, is the teamwork of working with the people on the Rackley team, having the people that I love. I mean, when I go into my office, I'm pumped. I, I'm like, yes, like I get to go to the office almost to a flaw, I want to be here too much. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it is it's, you get to work with great people who are like-minded, who want to create a great service and, and, and take care of great people. Uh, so those are, those are my two favorite things, the relationships with the clients and the relationships with the team. How did it feel to sell your first house? Felt pretty good. That's a good question. Man, it felt good. My, uh, I had daydreamed about taking my commission check and sliding it over to the teller and saying, cash that please. And I did it and it was awesome. So um, yeah, I think it's important to have a vision. So when you, when you think about selling your first house, I think you should have a vision. What, what is that going to look like? What am I going to say? How, how am I going to take a photo? Whatever. So like what I did is I took a photo of the clients in front of the house, got it framed. I uh, took, took it to the closing table with a bottle of champagne that had a custom label on it with their name on it. And, uh, and we just celebrated, and it was awesome. And so that was really incredible to get to, to have that moment. Um, do you believe there are benefits to going to college and getting a degree prior to becoming a real estate agent? No. Uh, I'm sorry, yes and no. There are benefits, definitely, but I guess... I naturally read that to read, do I require going to college to get a degree to do well in real estate? Definitely not. One of, the, one of my best hires was a girl named Lawson who she left college. She, she chose to take advantage of you know, uh, making money and instead of spending another two to three years at, at college. And she, she's doing great. So um, definitely don't need it, but like I said before, you, it will leverage you to have a greater understanding. My honest opinion is if you have the opportunity, you should choose to go to a liberal arts education uh, school. So you can be liberally uh, or educated with a liberal arts background. So you can have an understanding uh, that is very wide and, and very deep on, on uh, multiple spectrums. And so if you're curious about what that means, let me know. I'd love to, to share with you. Washtenaw Baptist is a great liberal arts education 
Um, and, and so I would encourage you to take advantage of school if it's important to you, but you definitely don't need it, not for real estate. Um, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, what was the most difficult hurdle you had to overcome as a realtor? Great question. This is something I still struggle with. Um, trying not to exploit friendships. Um, it's really forced me to be intentional about saying, okay, this is a friend, not just a connection or a potential income source. And through that, uh, it was very important that I began to understand what, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean that I'm a friend? How do I do friendship? What does that even look like? And it's really forced me to kind of take a step back and say, how can I really protect the relationships I have and make sure that they don't think I'm just going to be lead generating to them all the time. So that's a great uh, hurdle that I still have to wrestle with all the time is how can I balance the fine line of you're my friend. So I want to ask you for help and say, I need referrals because that's how this business is built. But at the same time, you're my friend and I don't want to wear you out and, and force you to try and be my income source. So that's something I battle with. And so the way around that, that I've tried to balance is to, to really focus on providing value, coming from contribution, giving to my friends and family more than I ever request. So uh, if I'm gonna ask for a referral, I'm gonna be giving them brownies, I'm gonna be giving them coffee, I'm gonna take them to lunch, you know, two to three times before I ever use the question, hey, who do you know who needs to buy a home or sell a home that I could call today? And there's, there's a lot that goes into that that we could talk about, but um, that's, that's definitely the overall summary of the hurdle that I've, that I've had and I do my best to overcome every day. What are my long-term goals? I want to be the top producer in Little Rock, and I want to be the top producer uh, in Central Arkansas. So uh, within, the, within the next three to five years, I would like to be top five in all of Central Arkansas. And then I would like to have potentially a brokerage in, in Northwest Arkansas and maybe even Dallas, uh, and potentially Austin, Texas. So uh, that's kind of my current long-term goal that um, we're constantly kind of adapting and, and trying to grow to see if we can make that happen. What is the main factor that differentiates a successful real estate agent from one that struggles? Consistency. If you are consistent with the things that you know work, a lot of agents will try and build their business on their creativity. So they're very creative people. And so if you think of it as like a triangle, they, the, your foundation should be your systems, the, the tools that you use for lead generation consistently, the marketing efforts that you employ that are, that are foundational. Um, and then the cherry on top should be your creativity, the way that your, per, your personal twist outside of the box uh, twist to all that. The problem is most realtors flip that upside down and try and balance their triangle on their creativity and fail. Um, so basically consistency is what should be a priority for every new agent, especially doing the hard things consistently. In fact, it's really not even that hard. It's, it's, uh, it's simple, you know, it's just a matter of, of being consistent. So I would say being consistent and being disciplined to do the things that aren't always glorious even when you start doing successful, when, when you start doing well, that's when you should continue to do those things that are not always easy and be consistent. Consistency is key. What is, um, or it says, if you, would ha if you had to go back and start a career in something completely new, what would it be? If I had to go back and start a career in something completely new, what would it be? Man, that's a good question. I would probably, if it couldn't be marketing and it couldn't be real estate, my honest answer is I have no idea because I love those two things so much. Uh, so I wouldn't do anything else. <laughs> There's nothing else. Yeah, nothing. It's the, it's the best. Um, I'd probably, I, just, I honestly can't think of a thing. Uh, yeah. Any final thoughts, stories, insight that I wanted to share? Um,
you know, I think it's really important that I just want to highlight on that the, uh, the one of the things that I learned, and it's um, I learned that it's important to to take notes uh, in an in an organized way consistently. I've learned that when you write things down, uh, you're able to be more effective. So whether I'm on a listing appointment, I'm writing it down. If I'm on uh, a phone call, I'm writing the things down that I hear. If I am, you know, reading a book, I'm writing down the thoughts that I have or I'm taking notes on the, the things I'm learning. If I'm listening to a podcast, I'll write down some of the things that stand out to me. And so what I've done over the past, you know, five years really is I've journaled and now created a list of what we call Rackley rules that are, are 15 values of our team that it's just been, it's come from journaling. I mean, some of the things are things I heard from my mama. My mama used to always say, never keep a compliment a secret. So that's one of our Rackley rules. We never keep compliments a secret. If we like somebody's shirt, we're going to tell them. If we think somebody's got a super cool pair of shoes on, we tell them how cool their shoes are. Funny story, I told a dude, man, that's an awesome jacket. Complete stranger in a shoe store. I was like, man, that's a cool jacket. Fast forward, no joke. One year later, I'm in his wedding. I complimented a stranger on his jacket. The next year, I'm in his wedding. That's crazy. Never keep a compliment a secret. And I got 15 Rackley rules. I'd love to share them with you. They've absolutely changed my business. And, and the things that they're basically saying, hey, these are the things I want to be true of myself. These are the things I want to be true of our team. And so we have a system. It's the three strikes you're out. If you, if you uh, don't follow through with uh, the Rackley rules, you know, it's the three strikes that you're out. I mean, it's, it's a pretty, sis, uh, pretty simple system. Uh, and they're, they're not hard to, to follow through with. Um, but they're things that are that that really take seriously character uh, and integrity. So that's my encouragement. Take good notes and and define who do you want to be. Because the better you know yourself, the better you can help others, other businesses, other clients get to know who you are as well. And the more they know you, the more likely they'll trust you if who you are is true to uh, to what you need to be. I guess. And, and then you're more likely to earn their business and their repeat business and their referrals. So that's my encouragement. Hopefully I have answered these questions in a way that will uh, be exciting to, to take some, something away from. Uh, I'm here for you if you have any other questions. I'm excited to help. Thanks for having me.